Gadget UK here again and this time we're looking at a couple of Sega Saturn cards actually. Uh, now these are from the Japanese version of uh, King of Fires 95. The interesting thing is this I think is one of two games I think that were produced for the Saturn that made use of a cartridge. Uh, now well that's not entirely true. There are two different types of cartridge you can get. You can get ROM cartridges and that's what this is. You can also get RAM cartridges, uh, and obviously the RAM cartridges are in two sort of variants. I think there's a one meg version and a four meg version. So some of the other King of Fighters games, I think King of Fighters 95, uh, sorry 96, 97, I think they used the uh, one meg carts. It could be the four meg, I'm not sure, but they used the RAM cart, not the ROM cart. But this was, I think, the first game to decide to use. You know, they decided to use a ROM, uh, and the reason being, well, maybe. Uh, to do with copy protection, I'm not sure, but I think primarily because of the graphics, you know, you could stick all the graphics on here and the load times would be significantly reduced. And I have checked out videos on YouTube of this loading, it does seem to suggest that, uh, yeah, it speeds up the load time significantly because, you know, you've got so much of the great graphics, graphical assets already available, you know, super quick, you know, these are super quick to access compared to a CD. And then the CD is used for some of the just the you know, level layouts and the music, um, sound effects, things like that. Maybe some of the sound effects are on here, I'm not sure. But um, anyway, these are described as faulty. Um, I'm guessing we'll just be able to do a cleanup job on these. I have no idea. Maybe there will be a fault. We might need to reflash a chip if we can. It might, might not be able to. It's going to be a mask ROM on here, I would think. But we might be able to replace it with an EEPROM or something. I've got no idea. But in the first instance, we'll just uh, remove the screws here. And these look like the same screws as uh, an N64, uh, Mega Drive cars, PC Engine, uh, SNES, by the looks of things. So we'll get those two screws out and have a look inside, clean up the PCB. Um, I'll burn a copy of uh, King Fighters Night 5. Um, I'll go with the Japanese version initially, but the PAL version apparently uses this car as well, I think, from what I understand. Um, I'm not sure whether the NTSC version was just disc only, it may be. So, you know, if you were looking for a way to play this, maybe you go for the, the American version. But I'm not 100% sure on that. I'll perhaps report back later with an annotation or something. I'll stick something up here now. Um, but yeah, let's get the screws out. Have a look inside. What you've got to do on these is pull this piece, the bottom piece, up like that to disconnect it. I think. Yeah, that's yeah, that's right. As you can see, you can see the holes there. You need to pull the hooks off, you know, outwards and upwards away from it. Um, and then I'll just capture this because I need to because I'm not I won't remember which way around the board goes and stuff. I mean, it could probably only go one way. These things typically work that way. As you can see, a piece of shield there. You board with your single ROM chip. And that's it. I'm amazed there's not even a cap on there, <laughs> actually. I would have expected at least a 100 nanofarad cap or something. Um, and then another piece of shielding on the underside. So, yeah, I think that's going to be clean. Can you see that? Just look how dirty those contacts are. That's why this car is not working, without uh, a doubt. I'll be amazed if there's anything actually wrong with that, to be honest. So I think what we'll do is uh, to get the fiberglass pen on there. That's probably going to be the easiest thing, actually, to clean that up. And then a bit of IPA. Um, I just wipe it down. I mean, we could use an eraser, but I think the fiberglass pen will be uh, suitable for something like that. That will be okay. Yeah, that's making a fantastic job actually. I'll just see if I can show you the difference in those pins there. Just have a look at the difference there. Can you see the ones I've just done with the fiberglass pen compared to this side? They're super clean. Yeah, so here's a bit of a before and after. You can see it. this side I've done. I've not wiped it with the IPA yet, but look how gold and shiny those contacts look. And you know, you can see the fiberglass pen, it's not damaged that in any kind of way, it's just brought it up super clean. Uh, have a look at this side here. So, this is the side I'm about to do. Uh, it's not too bad that side actually, the other side was a lot worse. So, uh, yeah, I'll see if I can uh, just give you um, a close up example here, and I'll see if I can avoid knocking the camera. And you may just be able to see uh, the difference. Yeah, I mean, you, it's hard to tell. I can't tell through the viewfinder here whether you're able to see what difference that made there. Yeah, so I'll go over the rest of that now, uh, then wipe it up with the IPA and give it a try. And I'm going blind. There are, of course, a, a couple of caps on here, actually. Um, but as you can see, yeah, connection's super clean there. So we'll get the lid back on. Let's get the shield back on there. Uh, and then this one's to sort of hinge in this way here I think yeah not the easiest thing to put back together I have to admit
Yeah, I'll show you how to put the next one back together because they're not as easy as you think. Now I'm going anti-clockwise there with the screw so it clicks over just so we don't cross thread it. So that's that one done. I can clean up the shell now. I mean it's not faded. Uh, that's the main thing. The label's in super good quality condition there. Uh, so we'll take a look at this one as well. So again the screw's removed and slide the bottom piece up like that on both sides and sort of pull it apart at the same time. There we go, it's come out, no damage. Um, so exactly the same again, just a single chip with the two caps. Uh, hopefully you can see. Dirty contacts again. Yeah, look at those contacts. Awful. Yeah, so not that you can see, those are super clean now. Now, what I would say is a previous technique I've shown of using an eraser. You know, a number of passes with an eraser IPA, then an eraser AIPA. That is your best bet, actually. Fiberglass pen, yeah, the, the, some of these pens were particularly corroded, so the fiberglass pen was really useful, and it has brought these up super clean. But just on the very, very edges, just on one or two, they look just a tiny bit of silver, like the gold plating has come off. And if you look at the green mat here, see this? This is the dust from, you know, the cleaning there. You see it's got a browny sort of colour to it. That's gold. So yeah, you know, if you use a fiberglass pen, yeah, for you know, particularly corroded contacts, it's a good idea. Um, these, you know, it's like I say, all the gold's not come off. If you look at these, you can still see they look very gold there. But just on the tips of one or two, like down here, for example, you might not be able to see it very well. Just on the bottom there, it looks a, bit, a little bit silvery. So yeah, you know, when you use a fiberglass pen, you are removing a, a very fine layer of the gold plating. Yeah, I think one side's gone in. This side's almost in here, you can see. And I've got to try and push it down at the same time as push it together. Here, like this. Massage it a bit, maybe. Yeah, that side's in. Can you see that? This side isn't. Yeah, incredibly difficult to get back together, actually. Unless you just force the lumen thing, but then you'll break the plastic if you're not careful. Makes me wonder how on earth they did these in the factory. Probably with the machines. There we go. Yeah, it will take a few attempts, but uh, as you can see, you know that's gone back to together okay. Just need to get the screws in again. Yeah, turn it the wrong way, click, and then the right way. Turn it the wrong way, click, turn it the right way. So I'll show you what happens initially here. Now this is without the cart in. Yeah, so it says sliding, wrong cartridge is not inserted correctly. So you do need the ROM in there. So let's uh, connect the ROM up. Uh, just make sure it's in there properly. I've put it in and out a few times just to make sure. Yeah, both cases here. It's a case of I had to stick it in and out of the slot uh, a good 10 to 20 times, funnily enough. Um, despite being clean. But I put that down to, like I said, the, I think it's the slot on the satin. You know, it's widened a little bit. Sweet. So yeah, both of those work. Yeah, so I've got these working quite reliably now. You know, that was just after swapping cars, it worked first time. Let's swap back to the other one. And all I've done here is introduce a little bit of IPA before I've stuck the cart in actually and then uh, push it in and out twice. And it seems to work every time. So I would suggest if you've got cart problems with your satin, you know, do spend a bit of time cleaning the cart up, but also, you know, uh, do what I've done, stick the cart in and out there a number of times. Maybe consider cleaning your cart slot with a bit of paper. You can see that one's now worked first time as well, I think. Yeah, that one's worked first time as well. So, um, it's not always the carts as the point trying to make. You know, I had a bit of IPA on there, still damp, and then put it in and out of the slot to solve this. So in my case, it was a little bit of contact dirt on the actual uh, cartridge, uh, on the actual socket edge. So that was with the PAL version, uh, English. So let's uh, switch it off, take that out. I've burnt a Japanese version as well. Now the interesting thing is, despite the fact my system's chipped, you also have to mod, there's like a region code on the disc, so you take the ISO, in this case it was the first binary track, the dot bin, track one, uh, and just run through the utility, um, open that binary track, and you can see it'll say the region, it said it was Japanese and I changed it to English, so we'll give that a go, 
that should work as well. Uh, but but that's something that's something that people often overlook with the sound. You know, you think once you've chipped it, will uh, play discs from any region, um, and it won't. That just bypasses the protection. Um, you do need to go a step further if you want to play games from different regions. Um, but as you can see, that's working. That's fine. With, that's with a Japanese disc, like I say. I'm not sure what the differences will be, other than maybe some of the menu options may appear in Japanese. Oh, there you go. Got some Japanese there. Sorry, I've repositioned the camera a bit there. It's a bit over bright, but you can see, yeah, the Japanese version is working. Uh, let's it start. But yeah, it's easy to overlook that. You know, you can assume if you've got your system chipped, you can play games from other regions, and you can't. Well, you can if you modify that region code on the disc. The other thing you can do is just use an action replay and that's what I usually use, that will allow you to play any game from any region. Or you could actually just region mod your system, put a you know, multi-region BIOS in there. That's one that you can switch between regions. Yeah, so not bad that. They worked out about a pound each with uh, a tiny bit of shipping actually, about two pounds shipping. Uh, it did take a week or two to get here from Japan, but um, yeah, I'm glad I've got that. At least I can play that game now, because I think without this cartridge, you know, as I saw, as you saw earlier on, you can't load the game without this cartridge, so that's the only way you can play this particular game. I think there's only one, one of the game that uses a cartridge. Uh, I'm not that fussed about that game particularly. I'm not that really bothered about this game, but it's just nice to be able to... Um, Restore something, I guess, and just uh, you know prove one way or another whether it was faulty or not. And in the case here, you know neither of these are faulty. Uh, I would suggest it'd be quite rare to find a faulty one of these. Anyway, hopefully you found that interesting. Thanks for watching. I'll see you soon.